Welcome to the Property Gurus. This video shows the redesign of a bathroom in an old house. The slides you can see here show the bathroom prior to the redesign. And this video is intended to give you some tips and ideas and to show you how we went through the process of designing the new space. Hope you enjoy it and please subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks. Before we started any building work, we drew up a plan as to how the bathroom would work well. So the first thing to do here is obviously to take the dimensions of the room. So this room was essentially eight feet square. So it was 2.43 meters across the back wall and 2.37 meters down either side. So the starting point for your design is to obviously draw that out on a blank piece of paper. So just take a ruler and measure out a scale drawing of those dimensions. We then knew that we wanted to have a bath and a separate shower. So we had to work out where the best place to place those was. Now, this wall here had an existing large window that you'll see in the video when we move on to it in a minute. So this area here was a, had a very low height because the window came down to quite a low level. That meant that this was the perfect situation for the bath. Because a bath is low level, you can place that and run it adjacent to the window. So this bath actually sits underneath the window above it. And so that really gave us the starting point for the room. We knew that the window was there. We knew we wanted a bath. This was the ideal place for the bath. So this was the first part of the design. We drew the bath and we knew we wanted a standard bath. So that's 1.7 meters long by 700 mil deep. So the first thing to do was to draw in the bath. So we knew that was here. The door was over here. So we drew the door. So we knew we had a bath and a door. That was our starting point. That then left us a big space here and a small space here. So of this 2.43 meters, 1.7 is taken up by bath. That meant that we had about 700 millimeters here. Now, a toilet is somewhere between 350 and 500 wide. We knew that the Rack 600 toilet is 365. That gave us 180 millimeters either side of the toilet, which is perfect. So by having our dimensions and knowing the bath was here, it really then led us to place the toilet in this spot here. The other benefit of having the toilet here is that this is an external wall and we can then have the waste going out through the external wall, which is perfect. So the bath and the toilet were the first parts of the design. We then had this space over here. The question was how to fit a, a full size shower. We could have had it running this way, but if we'd have had it this way, then it would have made the room feel more cramped because you'd walk in and there'd be a solid area here and a solid area here. So we wanted to, as you walk in, to have the shower slightly behind you as you come in, it's, it's to the left, and feel the open space here. You can see on the drawing how much space there is on the floor. If the shower had gone in this direction, then there would have been less space because the shower would have blocked off this area and it would have felt more constrained. So by having the shower in the corner here, it meant more open floor space. So that then meant that the best place to have the shower is this wall and the best location in terms of the aspect of it was to have it running the, the longest wall, the longest part of the shower along this wall. So we've got a 1,000, a one meter shower, which is quite luxurious, quite big, by 760, which is standard depth. And the best place to have the, the doors for that was to walk in here. So to have a sliding door that opened this way and be able to, to walk into the shower here. That then left us, so this 2.37, we had 700 for the bath, 760 for the shower. So that's 1.46. So we basically had the remainder here, which meant we could put a nice 600 mil standard width sink and we decided to get one that was a vanity unit with some storage because storage is critical in all bathrooms so the built-in storage was ideal put that here left plenty of space and you can see it in the design in a minute the, the style that we went for the last thing to work out was where to put the radiator you always need some heating and this space here 
was perfect because we had a lot of free wall space and it's a design feature as you'll see so we thought as you walk in it'd be nice to be able to see this radiator it's a nice feature and it's also accessible if you're either in the bath or the shower if the towels are hanging on the radiator so that's the design plan that's how to go about working out your own space draw up the dimensions have an empty box think about any features that are already there such as the door and the window how to work around those think about where the external walls are ideal to have your toilet on an external wall and then work out the space to make sure that you get a big lot of open space so that it feels as large as possible so let's have a look at the actual bathroom itself today we're looking at a brand new bathroom which has been completely renovated so we'll look at the design features and have a tour around first thing to note is that we have replaced the door this is an oak door which came unfinished and we have put two coats of natural matte oil on here so it's got a really nice textured finish you can feel the grain gives it that luxurious feel and we've fitted uh, a rose handle and uh, a bathroom lock so nice modern stylish look so let's have a look in the bathroom itself so coming in the first thing that you notice is the flooring which is polished porcelain tiles which have a very nice reflective edge to them these are 600 mil by 600 mil square tiles so quite large and the benefit of that is that it makes the room feel bigger because you don't have a lot of grout lines it feels like one big continuous floor which is great we've also matched the grout this is that these tiles are royal grey so we got them off the internet very good deal royal grey and we put a light grey grout in there which is very similar so basically when you're looking at the floor you don't really notice the grout lines it feels like one big continuous polished porcelain floor so having a quick look around we've got shower cubicle we've got a built-in vanity sink we've got a bath with a shower attachment We've got a toilet and we've got a nice stylish radiator so let's have a look at some of these design features the plan here this bathroom is not huge but it does provide us with a fair bit of space and what we've tried to do is utilize that space to make it feel as spacious as possible but also as luxurious so in any bathroom these days it's ideal if you can have a bath because Every family needs a bath, even if in your household you don't have any children. At some point, if there's a possibility of having children in the house, you always need a bath. It's a nice, relaxing part of the day, at the end of the day, to put the kids in the bath and for them to have a play. So even if you don't take baths and you don't want a bath, it's always good to, to install a bath, at least one in every house, so that you've got somewhere that the kids can have a wash at the end of the day so always important to install a bath what we've got here is a modern bath which essentially doesn't have any taps on the bath itself so you can see that you could sit uh, either end of this bath and we've bought a bath with, without any sides to it and we built a frame so this was a wooden frame that we built and then we've applied the same tiles that are on the floor to the side of the bath. They look a bit darker when you look here, but that's just the lighting because they're slightly shadowed by the overhang on the bath. But it gives us a nice, easy finish. We didn't have to worry about how to, what to have on the side of the bath. And if you notice here, if you look at the grout lines, you can see that they're all uh, the same polished, uh, the same light gray. However, this one here isn't. We've used silicon on this one. And the reason for that is that enables us to have access. We could cut out that silicon and remove this tile if we need to gain access in future to any of the plumbing that's under the bath. So it's a nice design feature in terms of it looks great to have this tiling, but it also enables us to be able to, to gain future access if we need to. We've gone for a style of tap that is mounted on the wall, wall mounted tap. And what we have here is two different options. We've got the bath tap itself. So we put that on. We can see there's a, there's a knob here. 
that when you turn it, it turns the water either to run into the bath or when you turn it, it comes out of the shower head. So dual purpose. The reason we got that is that Again, when you're having children in the bath, you want to be able to wash them, or if you've got a dog, or you know, you just want to wash your hair if you're having a bath. Uh, it's much nicer to be able to have uh, running water from a shower head. And having this type of bath tap just gives you that opportunity to be able to, to use both the shower head and the tap to fill the bath. We've gone for a centrally located plug for this sink and the reason for that is that you can have children sitting at either end of the bath without having to worry about sitting on the plug and this is a pop-up turn type plug so very modern stylish looks great so that's the bath we've situated it underneath the window there's a lovely big window in this room which brings in a lot of natural light again a feature that we would encourage uh, really depressing and dark if you have a bathroom that has no natural light in it, so it's great to have a window. And because this window is already here and was quite large, it meant that the area next to the window was constricted in terms of the height. So putting the bath underneath it is perfect because the bath's low level, it's going to take up a fair bit of space, so putting it under the window is the perfect situation because you, you're able to keep the full height window and not lose valuable space. When we measured out this room after the bath, this is a standard length bath, which is 1700 mil, 1.7 meters. That left us here with a relatively small space at the bottom. So this space here is only about 500 millimeters deep, you can see on the tiles. We fitted a rack 600 toilet, which is about 320 mil wide. That leaves us a little bit of space either side, so not a massive amount, but plenty to sit on, uh, and it really use, uses this space well. The other design feature here that we've gone for is that you have to have the waste for the toilet going out to an external wall. This is an external wall, as you can see from the window, so it made it much easier to fit this toilet because it's straight out through the back. So we didn't have to worry about the plumbing, you can see that there's no pipes on the display because we've managed to bring everything up through the floor and out straight and the waste goes straight out the wall. So nice, tidy, neat job and we're able to tile all around that. Moving on to the vanity and the, the shower. If we look here, we had this was all planned out before we started to install it. So we knew this bathroom. The bath itself is a standard width which is about 800. We then had a gap in the middle here, which is about a meter, which left us a, a, an area here of about a meter for this shower. So we've gone with a full height fitted shower cubicle, gone very modern. So you can see that we've got a wall mounted. We open the, the sliding door. We've got a wall mounted shower head which is perfect, gives nice and luxurious, big head for lots of rainfall water. We've concealed all of the pipework in the wall, and then we have a simple thermostatic valve, which the top one controls the temperature and the bottom one controls the flow of water. So very simple mechanism, very easy, very stylish, looks great. We've gone with a shower tray, which is much easier. You can have, these days you could have a, a wet room look, but that can get more complicated from a plumbing point of view. If you have a standard shower tray like this, it's all watertight and the water automatically flows through to the large drain that comes with it. We've set this slightly higher than floor level. The reason for that is that we've then put all of the plumbing under that section and we've done a similar thing here that we can access that plumbing if we need to by removing one of these tiles. So it just gives future access and makes it much easier from a maintenance point of view. This shower cubicle itself came in a kit. So it's quite a stylish one. It's got, it's frameless. So it's got a roller at the top, which sits on a nice bar that goes side to side. All looks very stylish. Uh, we found that having an enclosed cubicle 
helps keep the water in. You can get some that are open at the back or the side, but we found that water does come out of those. So when we've rented properties previously, uh, we've had complaints from tenants that water is going onto the floor. So having an enclosed cubicle like this just keeps life simple. It looks stylish, it looks neat, and we, we find it works really well. Moving on to the vanity in the middle. This is a 600 wide vanity unit with a built-in resin sink. This resin sink, nice, stylish, modern, clean, nice and reflective. We bought a tap, which is a single monochrome tap. So it's basically hot and cold water comes through. And this is a click clack sink. So you just press it down, the plug. And the unit itself, the reason we bought this, we like the style because it tapers in. The taper actually makes the space feel larger. If this was a, a rectangular, so it was the same width at the bottom as it is at the top, it wouldn't feel very spacious because we would have a very limited amount of space between the bath and the bottom and also the shower at the bottom. Having this taper where it, it comes down so it's in a slight V just makes everything feel a little bit larger. When you look at the profile, if you have a look at the, the way that it sits, it just feels bigger because you're naturally drawn to the floor level and you can see that there's more space at the floor and instinctively that tells you that there's lots of space even though it isn't and these the reason we bought this is it's just easier to come with true drawers the plumbing is under here so we've already got all the plumbing built in so in this top section here that you can't use it because it's fixed it's got um, all the pipe work but you've got a very nice purpose-built drawer that you could store some uh, bathroom equipment in here and then there's a drawer at the bottom for all your spare gels and uh, shampoos and soaps and anything else that you want. So it, it's nice to have the built-in unit rather than just a sink, helps with some space. In terms of the other design in here, we fitted a very large mirror. So this mirror is virtually the whole wall. We've gone as far as we could because the shower is obviously all tiled. So we've got full tiling uh, here. And then this mirror itself is one meter high by around 1.6 meters across. So quite a large mirror. And what that does, when you walk into this room, it doubles the space. It makes it feel twice the size. So you look at the actual window, and then as you look into the mirror, you can see that the window's fully reflected. All the light is reflected. You can see the toilet and the bath and everything in the mirror. So it just gives it that feel of being twice the size. When you walk in here, it feels double the size that it would if that was a plain, if that was the same as this wall, and you just walked in and it was just a plain wall, then it wouldn't have the same feel. This makes it feel twice as light and twice as big. So a really good design tip, put a large mirror onto the wall and it will double the size of your room. Really, really great idea. We haven't done it all the way to the ceiling for two reasons. Firstly, we have to have a shower, uh, an extractor fan in here. So we fitted the extractor fan above it. But secondly, from a design point of view, it just looks better if it's not the full height. If it's the full height, it feels as though that's the whole wall and it doesn't have the same style impact. Having it in a more letterbox format, so not full height, you can then put a frame around it. So you can see here, We've put a metal frame around this. This is tile trim. So we'll have a look at that in a second when we look at the tiling, but it's tile trim. So it's the same here. Where we've fitted a mosaic border, we've put a tile trim on top of that. So you can see here. And round the windowsill, we've used the same trim. And the reason for this trim is it gives it a nice edge. So it stops the tiles being able to chip here where it might potentially have breakage if it got knocked, if somebody was banging something against it by mistake. But it gives it a lovely, modern, stylish look. So when you look around here, we've got the mosaic and they've just got this nice bit of metal on the top, it just helps finish it off really nicely. So going back to the mirror, we've done the same with the mirror and it just gives it that nice, stylish, clean, modern, square look. Go back to the mosaic. The reason we put the mosaic in, firstly, it breaks up 
the tiles. So if we look in the shower area here, where you've got full height tiling, that can be a bit oppressive if there's nothing there. It looks a bit dull. So the floor is all tile. And if the wall was all tile too, it wouldn't have the same impact. Whereas when you come up here now, you see this nice, nice metallic mosaic breaks up the space, makes it look more stylish and just catches the eye. The other reason we put it in is to enable us to half tile the walls. So if we look on this wall here, you can see that we've got the, the same type of tiles, but these floor tiles are 600. These wall tiles are 300s and we've laid them end to end. So that means we've put them uh, in a portrait fashion rather than lands, landscape. So that has been done to make everything feel taller, to make the wall feel taller. Uh, it, it stretches things out, has a nice, if you look at the shower where we've done it end to end, it makes it feel nice and tall and goes all the way to the ceiling and really stretches out the height. But also having this mosaic enables us to then put a stop to it. So we've got two tiles here, and then we've put the mosaic in with the border on top. The reason we've done that is then we've got some wall here that we've painted, and that enables you to change the color and to change the, the style of the room. So we've got around the door, we've got some painted area, all across this wall we have some, and then around the window we have some, and then above the mirror is painted. So if in the future we decide that gray is no longer in fashion and that uh, some other color is pre preferred, you can change this bathroom by just painting these areas. So it gives the future ability to change the feel of this room. Whereas if this was all tiled gray and gray goes out of fashion, then you're really just stuck with an old fashioned look, an old fashioned color. If we decide that pink or blue or yellow is something that is gonna really change the feel of this room, we could paint all these walls in those colors and it would make it feel like a completely new room. So having the mosaic helps just to make it more stylish, makes it look quite attractive, catches the eye, gives you a nice modern feel, but also enables you to then finish the tiling and have plasterboard above it, which uh, gives the ability to change the colors. So a really nice tip. Coming back to the window, as we mentioned, we have tiled fully into this. So rather than having a window board here, which might be wood, we've put the same tiles onto the windowsill. So that enables us to tie the window in. So you can see the mosaic as you come round, it goes into the window reveal. We've got the tiles all across what would be the windowsill and then into this reveal as well. And that then, this window was already here and looked old fashioned. But now that we've tiled into it, we've put this window sill with the modern finish of the edging, which has come, it goes all the way to the edge here, comes down, we've got the mosaic in and the same on the other side. It's made this window feel more modern and part of the modern new design. So a really nice tip and just low maintenance. And then from a design point of view, you've got the option there of putting lots of things on this window. So you could put things for the bath along here. So you could have your shampoos or bath toys or anything else, the loofah or whatever you use in the bath could be on this windowsill, or you can have some plants or some modern design features. So having a surface to be able to put things onto really critical. And as you can see in here, we don't have a lot of surfaces. The shower doesn't have anything at the moment. We've got the vanity sink with some storage, a little bit around the edge of the bath, but this is a modern minimalist bath. So there's not a lot in terms of the thickness of these edges. There's, you can't really store a great deal on here. So having this windowsill is really helpful to be able to dress the room and make it feel more modern. And then finally coming on to the radiator, this is the perfect spot for it. So as we walk in through the door, We've got a, an area of space here opposite the toilet where there's nothing, there's, it's a dead space. <clears throat> so we've centralized the radiator. We bought a modern stylish, what they call it, a leaf shape. So you can see that it, uh, it goes out in the middle. So it looks a little bit like a leaf. 
Uh, very nice, stylish, modern, functional radiator. We fitted it into the wall. So we fed the pipes up before we did the renovation and then we've put in some angled valves here so that it comes straight at the wall. So we haven't got anything beneath it which would spoil the look. It would, looks like we had pipes coming up through here. We've tiled around it. It looks great. It's very stylish. You could hang some nice towels on here which again will bring some colour to the room, just help dress the whole area. So we planned this, we obviously tiled the wall before we hung the radiator. So the tiling was done, we'd cut holes into the tiles here so that the radiator is flush. And the same with the wall here, we cut some holes into the wall, fed the pipes through and then we fitted everything so that it looks modern and neat and fully fitted. So hopefully this room has given you some ideas as to what you could do in your bathroom. We'll just take another step back and have another final look through. So as we walk in the door, you have the toilet opposite you with the radiator on the side. The bath fitted nicely alongside the toilet. A lovely built-in vanity unit sink with storage. And then a one point, a, a very nice fitted shower with a head on the top and a lovely raised shower tray. So hopefully that's given you some ideas. We've done, sorry, finally on the lighting, we fitted six down lights, so nothing too elaborate. These are white, which is the modern way these days. If I turn the lights off, you'll be able to see them better. So these are white units, they've got built-in LEDs. The white blends in with the ceiling, so you can't, you don't really notice them as much, but it adds a lot of brilliant light, really illuminates this room and makes it feel so much better. So we turn off the, you can see, it doesn't look quite as flash, we put the lights on, it really brings the light thoughts bouncing off the tiling, off the mirror, off the bath, all these surfaces are illuminating the room. So hopefully you've enjoyed the tour and we've given you some ideas as to how you can go about achieving a lovely, modern, stylish look in your bathroom. We've been the Property Gurus, thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you again soon. Thank you.